I mean, the great problem that we have is that in every country, immediately you start to combat climate change, uh, people say, well, why should we do it? Because no one else is doing it. Here are we, small country, even a big country. We can't make a difference on our own. And the advantage of this report is that it shows that in the 33 countries that we've covered, a great deal is being done by countries as different as China and Australia at one end, um, Argentina and, and the United Kingdom. So people can begin to see that this is a worldwide action and they are playing a part in what others are playing their part too. And that's a really important point about uh, being able to convince your fellow politicians. And as a former Environment Secretary, I'm sure you would be well aware of all the conflicting pressures politicians are under these days. Um, is it, how important is it that we support politicians at a national level and give them confidence that they're not going out on a limb or adopting policies which, which maybe they feel are, are going to put them under undue pressure? Well, there are a lot of people in the world, of course, who are busy trying to stop us fighting climate change. They're very well funded by some pretty unpleasant organisations who, uh, because of their connections with uh, uh, industrial uh, businesses, uh, particularly, I'm afraid, in the United States, they they don't want us to fight climate change because it's not good business for them. So they're always suggesting that... uh, If you fight climate change, then it's bad for the economy, or other people aren't doing it, so it's bad for competitiveness. What this document shows is that more and more countries are saying, it's not bad for the economy, it's good for the economy, because if you can uh, reduce the energy that you're using, if you can spread your energy sources, you cease to be dependent upon a few countries to provide that energy, and you also, of course, ensure that you keep the price of energy down, leave alone climate change. So what this document really does is not only to show that everyone else, not everyone else, but a very large number of countries are are doing these things, but that they are doing it for self-interest as well as international interest. And that's very helpful for politicians when they come to fight some of the uh, less pleasant uh, uh, campaigners. Do you think ultimately it, it will come down to critical mass when enough people see enough people are making efforts to in- enforce a transition in their economies, everyone will come on board? Well, it'll take a long time for everyone to come on board, but when we, when we come to make the decisions uh, of the follow-up of Kyoto, it'll be very important that a large number of the countries who are voting and uh, fighting to get those decisions right will already have been doing what they need to do internationally, nationally. And what's exciting about this document is it shows that most of these countries are doing more at home than they are so far willing to sign up to internationally. Well, that's a good circumstance because it means people are really committed. And if we can keep that going, by the time we get to 2015, which is not very far ahead, when we've got to fulfil our commitment for a, an international binding agreement, we'll be a long way there because of what local national legislators have done.